Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful place, and uh, more importantly, we thank you for your beautiful word, Lord, and promises that are in it. So we pray now that you'd use Pastor Izzy to teach us, to encourage us, Lord, to show us your love, your great love for us, mm-hmm. your sacrifice for, for, uh, for us, Lord, and we just pray now that you use this time to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we just pray that you would refresh us and restore us and empower us for this coming week. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, guys, would you turn your Bibles back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, as we're going to continue through the chapter here, what Paul is writing to this little church at Corinth. And we saw last week that Paul's determination, the the very thing he determined was he said that, I determined in verse 2 to know nothing amongst you except one thing. What was it he wanted to know? That Jesus, yeah, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He said, the only thing that I really wanted to impress on you was the Lord. You know, he wanted them to know the Lord. He didn't care about if they knew Him. He didn't care, you know, Paul wasn't out for his own fame. He was out to make sure they knew the Lord. Because it's the Lord that has all that we need, not not the minister. You know, it's a, it becomes a personality cult. We have a lot of them in our culture where where the churches have grown into these personality cult surrounded a, around the, the leadership instead of saying the really who's the head of the church according to the scripture Jesus and so Paul said the only thing I, I determined was that you would know Jesus and him crucified you need to know about what he did for you on the cross if you know that man your whole life has perspective with a great perspective I mean a, the, the long range perspective that we need and so Paul Paul went on and he said, my message to you and my preaching in verse 4, they weren't with um, persuasive words of wisdom. He said, I didn't, I didn't dazzle you with fancy speech. Now, could Paul have dazzled them with, with fancy speech? Was he educated? Yes. yes. He was educated under, under Gamaliel. He was one of the, he was called a Pharisee of Pharisees. That's a really high title in the Jewish, that would be like a doctorate, we would say, in theology. They had to write by hand their own copy of the, of the book of Isaiah, the whole scroll, the jot and tittle. And this was supposed to be done from memory. Now today we're going to see that Paul definitely knows the scroll of Isaiah because he's going to quote it in this chapter coming up. But he had this knowledge that, you know, it would be like passing your bar exam or whatever. Okay, you want to pass for a Pharisee, a Pharisee title? Well, okay, just sit down and write the whole scroll. The whole scroll of Isaiah. Now, you guys know how long Isaiah is, right? It's 66 chapters. It's a long book. It's it's affectionately called the the mini Bible of the Bible. It has the whole story of the fall of man through the redemption, the redemptive work of the Messiah, what what was prophesied. Isaiah actually prophesies of the coming Messiah. And the whole thing actually overlays this, the, the, the 66 books we have of the entire Bible. So it's, it's, in Bible school, they do all these studies where you go, okay, let's learn what the first book's about, what's the first chapter of Isaiah about, what's the second Exodus about, what's the second chapter of Isaiah. And it's really an interesting study. It's amazing that it actually has overlap, overlay, I, I guess you'd say. You know, it's like two transparencies. Here's the book of Isaiah laid out. Here's the books of the Bible laid out. And you see this beautiful story of God redeeming mankind through his son. And so... Paul knows this stuff, but he says, look, I didn't come to dazzle you with, you know, with my fancy words of wisdom, but instead he said, I came to show you the Lord in a demonstration of the Spirit and of power. He knew that it was God's Spirit that really needed to be shown to them. It's God's Spirit. When, I talked about this last week. You know, when we listen to that, that still small voice it's called in the Psalms, a little voice that says, you know, you know it too, because nobody else has to tell you. You know, when you're doing something and that little voice goes, <clears throat> don't do that. And you're like, there's, where's someone in the room with me? You know, I mean, and you know, you know, inside that little voice is going, uh, 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 and you're going, you're just about to do it, you know, and, 
It's like the warning goes off. Or, or sometimes it's, it's not a, a warning, it's an urging. You should go do this. You know, and, you, and you're like, oh, no, I don't feel like doing that. You know, you want me to go help them? Nah. Now, somebody say, how do you know if that's the spirit of God or something you thought of? I said, because I don't think of going and helping them. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the spirit of God. You know, a lot of things the spirit of God tells me to do, I am convinced it's the Lord because I wouldn't come up with that. I'm busy doing my own thing and not thinking, oh, how can I go help that person in distress or go do, you know, forget that. I'm doing my own stuff, right? Take care of me. But the Spirit of God always points out things I overlook. And he always saves me from doing some of the stupid stuff I'm about to do by going, <clears throat> and last week I mentioned, all we have to do really is listen. Hear and obey. Jesus would end his sermons. Let those that have an ear to hear, let them what? Hear what the Spirit says. May you hear what the Holy Spirit tells you. Because if we all listened to the Holy Spirit when he urged us to do something or, or told us, warned us not to do something, the church would be in a much healthier place. We really would. I mean, as a church, I believe our, our light, our presence of that light of the Lord in this world would shine even brighter. Because we would all just be listening to that. What Jesus said, I'll send you the, the Holy Spirit. He will lead you. He'll guide you. He'll, he'll bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. Isn't it neat how the Holy Spirit can remind us of things about the Lord? And we're thinking, I can't even remember that verse. And all of a sudden you're talking to someone and out, blah, 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 and out came the verse and you're like, where'd that come from? You know, you didn't even know that you remembered it. But the Holy Spirit can bring those things to your remembrance. That's the beauty of the Spirit. That's why Paul said, that's all I wanted you to know was Christ and Him crucified and not, not with fancy words, but with the demonstration of the power, the power of God's Spirit. You need to know that. Now, why did they need to know this? This is what we ended on last time. They needed to know this, he says, because if they didn't, their faith would rest on the wisdom of men, not on the power of God. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.